for this example, we want to consider the differential equation y prime of t equals y minus 1 times y plus 1. So the direction field was drawn with GeoGebra below. I've actually linked to it in the class notes page. So if you want to see it, there it is. Isn't that lovely? And what we want to do is we want to find a solution that would let it be constant. So you can see that this green curve that I'm graphing is not constant. It's changing over time, doing different things depending on where I put it. So where could I place a point or where could I put a value that would make it so that it's constant the whole time, that that function is always the same? And the answer is there's two places because what would happen then if it's constant, it means that the derivative y prime would be equal to zero. So to be constant, so for the solution to be constant, let's talk about that. So for the solution to be constant, it means that y prime has to be equal to zero. Now where would that take place? So y minus one times y plus one, because that's what y prime is, would have to be zero. That would happen at two values, either y equals one or y equals negative 1. And you can see it right here. For all values of t, there are constants there. And I go back to the GeoGebra, and if I place my point A right on that line, oh, it's a little bit tough to do. There you go. There, it would work. See? If it was 1 or if it was negative 1. All right, lovely. So now, what else do they want to know? So find the solutions. So y equals 1 or y equals negative 1. Those are solutions that if I substituted them in, they would have constant solutions. Well, I guess I should say y of t is equal to 1 or y of t is equal to negative 1. Those are the solutions. I mean, they're one and the same to y equals, but it's just a reminder that the y values are functions. They're not variable values. This isn't an algebra an equation. These are differential equations. So it's a function that you're finding, in this case a function of t. Now, in what regions are the solutions increasing and in what regions are they decreasing? So let me go back to GeoGebra and see if I can get you to understand what I mean. So if I move this point around, I want to make it so, let me grab here. So you have to ask yourself, hey, that function's increasing. Whereas b, that function's increasing. Isn't that nice? C is flat, oh, D is flat, sorry, and C is decreasing, right? So the region where it's increasing would be down here in this green zone, right? Down below that flat solution. That's increasing from left to right. But also up here where Y is greater than 1. So when Y is less than negative 1, below negative 1, or Y is greater than 1, the function's increasing. But when y is between negative 1 and 1, like this blue one right here, those are decreasing functions. And of course, y equals negative 1 or y equals 1 will get me flat solutions that are constant, that never change. That's what we just answered in part A. So increasing. Increasing happened. how to write the word increasing. So it would go like up, 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 and then kind of shoot over. That's what we were seeing. We could also see it kind of being flat, but then going up like that. Those are both increasing areas. So when y is less than negative 1 or y is greater than 1. Decreasing happens in the middle. So it looks like this. So it's coming through and then follows those parking lot lines and kind of came out like that. That's decreasing. So decreasing occurs when negative 1 is less than y, which is less than 1. In other words, the absolute value of y is less than 1. And this one would be the absolute value of y is greater than 1, which is a quicker, easier way to write this. Now, which initial conditions y of 0 equals a lead to solutions that are increasing and decreasing over time? 
Well, in this particular case, that's not difficult to see because we kind of already saw it. But remember that this is talking about a t value. So in other words, we're talking about sitting on that y-axis. So let me go back to the GeoGebra graph just because it's easier to see. So what they're talking about is, hey, if you move this point over here and put it on the y-axis, if you let your t value be 0, you let your t value be 0, then what t values will make it increase and decrease as opposed to being constant? And it's pretty straightforward because in this case, this curve was dependent upon y's, not t's and y's. So it's actually the same answer pretty much as what we already said for c. We would need the t value, or excuse me, yeah, the t value, the, the, the constant, the y of 0, the t value has to be 0. So we would need the point value, a, to be equal to less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1 for increasing. And then decreasing would be between negative 1 and 1 right here, right there. All right, so let me go write that back on the paper. So the t value is 0. So in other words, we're sitting on the y-axis. So on the y-axis. What do you need to make your y value equal to to make this work? So if you're on the y-axis, if you're here, you're increasing. If you're here, you're increasing. So this particular graph worked the same for both part B and part C. That might not always be the case. So I would need A to be less than 1 or A to be, oh, excuse me, less than negative 1 or A to be greater than positive 1. In other words, absolute value of a is greater than decreasing would be a is mm, negative 1 is less than a which is less than 1 or in other words the absolute value of a is less than 1